you're hearing us now, guess what? We're recording. Guess what? And we have an amazing guest for you. And I am so honored to have her. She is my BFF, my homegirl, Por Vida. Yes. Um, the wonderful Katie. stunt actress. Yep. Katie Aishan. She. You have definitely seen her in TV and film. You have seen her everywhere i promise you. i promise you you've seen her kicking ass you've seen her tumbling you've seen her jumping through windows or jumping off buildings all of the above all of which is very impressive welcome to the show katie again <laughs> hey. <laughs> no worries you're it'll be the second time will be better We're that's good. right and Wait. you're so very patient with us thank you for so that. gracious so gracious thank you so much so diving right in stunts I would love Yay! for our audience to get a picture of where they might have seen you from, maybe some of the projects that you've been on, just so we can kind of paint a picture for them uh, at home. Yeah, sure. Um, as far as films you might know, one of the biggest films that I did when I started out was uh, I doubled Tina Fey on Date Night. That's yes. with Tina Fey and Steve Carell. It's I an love action that comedy. Movie. Super yes, fun. So yeah. good. Classic. Such a, such a great experience. Um, another one would be Born Legacy. I doubled um, Rachel Wise on that. Yes. Um, with Jeremy Renner. That one was with Jeremy Renner. That oh. was out in the Philippines, which was such an amazing experience. And one of my um, favorites because of all the motorcycle scenes. And I understand yeah. that you were on the back of that motorcycle. Yep, on the back of the bike with uh, his name was uh, Jean Pierre, French guy, so talented. Fifty mm. years old, you'd never know it. I can't even get so on good. a Vespa without like <laughs> shivering for dear, like shaking for dear life. You can't even look at a Vespa without shaking. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not. So kudos to you. Yeah, that's impressive. Awesome. Thanks. Um, and as far as TV shows go, probably Supergirl would be. The one that I had the most fun with. Um, I shot the first season of that in Los Angeles before it moved to Canada. The Canadians stole it. Oh, like they Canada. steal a lot of other things. That's Canada. where that theme, it just hit me. That's where that theme song comes from. Oh, Canada, you stole a lot of Let's be from honest. Us. I think we all wish we could be Canadian, but. Right? <laughs> I know, right? Just get out of here. <laughs> yeah. My sister in law is Canadian. She's awesome. Yeah, she represents Canadians are well. amazing. Yeah, and our, uh, one of our guests that we just um, dropped the episode today is from Canada, Quebec, as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That, um, oh, wow. So that's great. So you did Supergirl. And what other TV stuff have you done? Oh, man, a lot of random different TV shows. Uh, when I was newer, I did the show Jesse, which was yeah. one of their top oh, yeah, yeah. Disney shows. So I doubled, yeah, Debbie Ryan, who's the main actress on that. And um, I doubled the boy at one point when he was <laughs> growing up which was comical, um, and one of the other girls on it. And so I did a lot of Disney and um, a show called From Dust Till Dawn, which oh, was yeah. Robert Rodriguez's show. We yes. shot it out in Texas and New Mexico. Um, so I doubled, uh, her name was Aza Gonzalez. She was also in the movie Baby Driver. Um, oh, I just saw that movie. Jumped around so much. I've done a lot of the NCISs, Miami, New Orleans, um, New York, all of those. Uh, just a lot of a lot of different random TV shows and a couple commercials too. That's Love amazing. It. And you've done some stunt driving as well, correct? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I was really fortunate to. I, I always say I'm no Debbie Evans. So if anybody knows stunts at all, they know Debbie Evans. She's the number one stunt woman driver. She's done all the Fast and Furiouses, and wow. she's so talented. So I always say I'm no Debbie Evans, but I've been fortunate that when they can't get Debbie and they can't get maybe the top five, six, seven, eight girls, <laughs> and they need somebody who can do both the physical stunts and driving, then they'll call me, which is fine. I'm cool to be somebody's backup, backup, backup. Work is work to me. So Hey, that's awesome. I mean, and I was, you know, I always think of like the risk in like the work that you do and how like ballsy you got to be to do it. And it's crazy. You know, I know that your childhood, you were pretty athletic and you were pretty involved in a lot of stuff. So, you know, share with us a little bit about that. Is that where, where it all started? Yeah, I guess I would say definitely for sure. Um, I was the youngest. I'm the third child. I have an older brother and older sister. And they were just, they kind of turned me into their crash test dummy, I would say, by the age of like five. So in other words, they would 
want to go down the stairs on a mattress. I don't, know if you, I don't know if you guys ever did that, going down the basement basement stairs. And they're like, Katie, try it, you know, just because they didn't want to get hurt. Your so I would stair do fall. it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Stair fall. I, would do, I would do it. And then the mattress would get stuck and flip over, course, you know, but yeah. I would catch the railing really quickly. So, and then they would do it. And sorry if my sister ends up listening to this, but she would always get hurt every time. Or we <laughs> jump off of the, the roof on the second floor. Yeah. Oh, which like is upstairs. no big deal, just jumping she, off the roof. <laughs> to the trampoline when my parents are out of town, right? And my grandparents were watching but didn't know we were doing it. And me and my brother would do it fine. And then my sister were like, don't do it. And <laughs> yeah, she, she literally, she's so tall and skinny. She looked like she snapped her legs. She was okay. But um, but yeah, I think I just kind of grew up um, naturally being super competitive. And I just wanted to do whatever my older brother and older sister did. And then that kind of segued into gymnastics and other sports and um, kind of went from there. So it's almost like your childhood prepared you without you even knowing that this was the work that you would be doing in, right. in essence. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. I, I something in me just could never say no. Like if my brother would do a double front off the high dive, then I would try for a triple. It didn't always turn out right, but I just, there was something deep inside of me that I, I don't know. I just had, I felt like I had to do it. Like I, I couldn't let myself down almost. I don't know if that makes sense. It does. What doesn't make sense is what's a double front? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, what that sorry. Is. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. So like if you're jumping off the high dive, you uh -huh. know, you have like the most pools have like the low dive, the medium one, and then the high dive. You'd find so me off on the, the high, low. my brother would do two front flips. Awesome. And then he dared me to do three to which I was scared to do, but oh I went for it and I smacked hard, but they yes. respected me because I went for it. And that's, oh that's kind of part of stunts. You just, you obviously want to be as smart as possible, but sometimes, you know, you just have to believe that you can do it and do it. Right. Like, it's no more joke. than that. Like, I don't want some to be like, cool, I believe I could be a stunt person. Just go be a stunt person. It's a ton of training <laughs> and preparation, but. But you have to you have know, that like gusto to like, like you can't second get, you can't go jump off a building. That's your job. And you're gonna be like, uh, <laughs> wait a minute, but uh, I don't know. Uh. Like that would, yeah, be that you, would be me. Like when I started training high falls, for example, you start at 10 feet, make sure maybe do it three, four times until you feel comfortable and then keep going up, you know? Mm -hmm. And then once you get to where you feel like you're at your threshold, just trust your gut and then just say, that's your limit. Mm. So, and so you, you're, you're daredevil. Any, anytime your brother or sister would challenge you to do something, you would do it. How did that lead you into LA? Cause you're from Ohio, right? Yeah, totally. So growing up, my best friend, don't worry, Nato, you're my best friend now. I know. I, don't tell me her name because I'll go to Ohio right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but my, my best friend in kindergarten, she did like a gymnastics tumbling class and we already had a trampoline. So I kind of was self-taught and would turn on the jock jams, you know, yes. and just get pumped up. Boom. And would start, yeah, pump <laughs> exactly. Pump start teaching myself how to tumble. So I started taking classes and then, um, you know, I think the coach took recognition that I was fairly good. And so then I started actual gymnastics, which is all for events for women. And one thing led to the next and I kept excelling. Um, and then unfortunately around my, just before my sophomore year of high school, I kept getting injured. So I needed to quit cause I was tearing my hamstrings essentially. Um, oh, gosh. and which people ask me all the time, do I get injured with stunts? Which, yes, I do, but not like I did as a kid. I mean, gymnastics is so – it can be really gnarly. Um, but and So the from time. there, I went one year to college in Indiana, um, and only because I had a competitive cheerleading and track scholarship. And then from there, I just always loved film and TV in college. Just something didn't feel right. Like, I felt like I just wanted to go for it. I'd always – Loved California. I competed one gymnastics meet there, and I swore I would move back one day. Oh, I think that's it was awesome. in San Diego. Yeah. Um, so that summer, I went to what's called the New York Film Academy, which they also have in Los Angeles. And it was the six week program, and I fell in love. And within a month, I moved out. Didn't know stunts was even a career at the time, um, and decided I was going to pursue acting and make it happen because anybody from Ohio thinks they can just, you know, <laughs> move out. Well, why and not? Just, you know, it's the can do make, state. And make it happen. Right. So that's awesome. Yeah. It's so crazy. There's a common theme here where it's like, well, from the people that we have talked to, it's like nobody thought 
well, they're like, I'm going to come out here and I'm going to do, not sure what they're going to do. Like nobody thought, yeah. well, I'm going to be here, but. It was almo almost a compulsion yes. to, just, to just make it happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What did your family think and your friends think of uh, moving to Los Angeles? I, I don't even know if you had friends here at the time, but what did they think? Yeah, I didn't know anybody. I met a couple people at the New York Film Academy, but everybody that was in my class, I don't even think lives in Los Angeles anymore. Mm -hmm. um, my mom was supportive, but kind of wanted me closer. And I think California just scared her because everybody's so liberal and crazy you know, earthquakes <laughs> and all that. And she just, it, it's so far away. What about um, gangs? My, was she worried about gangs? Mine was. Oh, her, Lord. her thing was, which Nadia, you might be able to relate to this with your mom. She, her big thing was, please tell us before you run out of money. Don't, don't, don't start stripping which i can't dance for anybody that knows me i'm so white i have no rhythm and i'm like mom oh, you're I like would never you're like they'll pay me to not dance no no well, you know you hear all these dateline shows where they're like right was she a stripper or was it a murder hey listen you know, I, I, post, dateline. I post for lowrider magazine and my mom had that freaking magazine rolled up in her purse carrying around showing it to everybody so i don't yeah. know i mean that's a totally different thing than stripping for sure but hey it's pretty close Oh <laughs> she just she just saw so many TV shows on that where she you know one of those NCIS Miami or whatever they were America's but, um, Most Wanted. But my dad, my dad was actually super support. They were both supportive, but he especially was. He just thought absolutely you got to go for it. I mean, at first they questioned why couldn't I do classes at like Ohio State, you know mm -hmm. what I mean, or the college that I was at. And my whole thing was, I'm 20, I know I'm young now, and I just, I want to go for it. I just want to know. You know what I mean? I wanted to Check move out. out, be on my own, and pursue my dreams. And if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. But um, I don't know. There's just something inside of me that really felt this call to move to Los Angeles and to just not make something of myself. If that sounds so cheesy. It wasn't that. It was just, I loved LA. And I don't know, I believed, I love the film and TV industry, and I just wanted to learn everything that I could about it. That's what's so great. Like this industry, you know, when I think about this show, this podcast that we're doing here, it's like it's it's all encompassing about the entertainment industry. It's show business. Mm -hmm. And that's right. why, you know, we're here. We're interviewing you. It's a big part of like the movies. It's a big part of TV. And like a lot of times that doesn't even get recognized. I mean, like I'm sure you said, like you didn't think that, oh, like stunt actress. But a lot of people think that the actors are the ones that are doing this these stunts. It's like you watch an episode of whatever, and it's like, oh, that actress, man, she must know, like, some amazing martial arts. And it's just like, actually. <laughs> she took years of karate. And acting <laughs> and singing. <laughs> it's so crazy. But, which which uh, sometimes they, I've doubled some actresses where they really, they really want to do all of it or as much as they can, as long as it's not too dangerous. And some of them, I'll give them credit. Like, they do a good job. So some, it's, it's best to have both. Yeah. You know, if yeah. I can do my job and then she does her job as well, then you're going to get the best footage. That's awesome. I love that. What was it like the first job that you got as a stunt actress? What was that uh, experience like? And, and was it different than what you expected it to be? So my first job, I got it on my 23rd birthday, which was kind of cool. Nice. Um, it was for stunt coordinator. His name is Monty Simmons. Um, and I still look up to him this day. I actually worked for him on the walking dead last week as a zombie. Nice. So I still, he's That's still awesome. a buddy of mine and he's kind of my wisdom within stunts whenever I have any questions. But, um, so he gave me my first job and he called me and said, now, wait a second. Are you an actress? Or are you a stunt woman? Cause I don't want an actress. I want a stunt woman. <laughs> Cause my, at that time I'd been, you know, I hadn't booked any stunt jobs yet. I would, had the training but all my credits were acting which again I did like two non-union commercials within the two because I did acting for about two and a half years or pursued it yeah. um so, Wait, so he hired me on the show called medium okay and I doubled uh Neff Campbell and it wasn't a big deal so I think that's why he hired me because I'm I was just a really good double for her and um how'd you even get that meeting get... with him in the first place how did I meet him in the first like, place how did you go oh, from oh. like I'm auditioning for commercials so, and then all of a sudden you're like thrust it into stunts. right okay gotcha so six months before that um 
the way that I even came about to figure out that I wanted to do stunts was I would go tumbling, like gymnastics tumbling at a gymnastics gym called Gymnastics Olympica in uh, Van Nuys, California. Nice. And, and I met some stunt guys, which stunts to me at the time, being from Ohio and doing cheerleading, meant like we're going to do like a cheerleading stunt. Like oh, a, a, yeah. That's what we called it. We called it stunting, like stunts. So there was this guy and he was just always there. And I said, hey, no offense. Do you have a job? You're just here every time that I, because I would go like once a week. <laughs> and, he, and he was like, oh, I'm a stuntman. And I kind of laughed. And look, this is embarrassing. I should have watched the credits at this point, but you don't do that when you grow up in Ohio. Right. You're just like, I don't know anything about it. I don't need to know, whatever. So I never watched the credits. No clue um, that stunts was a career. I just thought either the actress did it or they hired a gymnast or they hired a NASCAR driver. I didn't realize stunts encompass anything action yeah. um, within the movies so he's you know he said he was a stuntman and he broke it down for me because I had no clue I was like like a cheerleader she looked at me like I was crazy <laughs> and he's like uh no I mean he had dreads like no so he broke it down for me and he said you know gymnasts actually make really good stunt women but you definitely should choose one or the other it's kind of hard to do both which thankfully for me when I did decide fully to get into stunts my first couple jobs ended up being like a stunt acting part because I did have the acting credits. Yeah. So it ended up being like a blessing in disguise. And I did a ton of extra work. You know, I had to work really hard to get, what, three acting jobs in two and a half yeah. years, which is good. Like, that's the way it, it is. That's the way it should be. So you appreciate it. So I understood the industry. I knew how to, like, go into an audition room and slates, and I would go into a stunt acting audition. And now I only had to compete against 10 to 20 girls. So I booked, like, the first couple jobs um but so how I met Monty was um pretty quickly I found out the way that a lot of stunt people get work is they hustle which sounds weird and I was like I'm sorry what like sounds <laughs> creepy right, right. Um, but it actually just means you get your headshot together you have your headshot your resume on the back and you bring all your information on set and Hopefully, as long as the stunt coordinator is in a good mood or, you know, willing to meet with you, you kind of give him your stuff quickly and just say, thanks so much for seeing me. I'd love to work with you. I did that for three years. And there were some so coordinators. You just show up to I would take notes. Sets? What was, you what was that? You would just show up to random sets. Like, how did you know that these, like. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, okay. So I, there's multiple kind of steps and everybody's path is so different, kind of like that. Of course. Acting, but I met some stunt people along the way and they would introduce me to somebody else and they would introduce me to somebody else. And at that time, everybody had a calling service. So, uh -huh. cause that was put in place before cell phones and all that. But so those still, those still, people still have them today and I still have mine, even though people call me directly. So you get a calling service and they would find out, they'd have a list of here's all these different sets or you get to know people and I had a group of 10 people that I would send them if I worked on a job and just would say don't tell them you got this for me and then vice versa so we would kind of text each other and just drive I would literally drive around town all day and go to two to three different sets and some wow. of those coordinators still have never hired me and then others have hired me but it took him 10 years to hire me that's insane because so, you guys don't have agents no I mean some people do but it's more so stunt coordinators or second unit directors will have agents. Um, I have a commercial wow. agent so that they can get me auditions. But for the most part in film and TV, it's the coordinator that you know. Are you a good double? You know, all the things that are kind of required. Are you capable of doing the stunt? That's amazing. I mean, that's so different from like, you know, just acting like yeah. I don't think you can have a career without an, well, an agent or a manager of some sort. I mean, I guess yeah. Bill Murray has one manager and like no phone or something, but he has an answer machine. You call <laughs> and he, <laughs> yes. have you heard this? Uh, he oh, a, yes. I love him. He has an answer machine that you call and you leave a pitch of what your project is and, and maybe he'll, he'll get back to you. Maybe, maybe, yeah. maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe you'll never yeah. hear from him. Maybe you will. That's th that's honestly, that's. All such a hustle just thinking about like having to go from set to set and if anyone's ever done cold calls for sales before uh it's really uh, really difficult to just walk up to someone and be like hi i have something to sell you and, and in essence that's kind of what you're doing as a as a stunt actress trying to get into the game is you're like hey i'm a product that you can use you know and i would imagine that there was a lot of like or at least for me, there'd be a lot of sitting in the car pumping myself up. 
Was that you or is it just your personality to just make it happen? Um, well, two things. A lot of times people like I had some really cool, great friends in the stunt community that were super helpful. And I mean, I hope and I think it's somewhat like this in acting too. You have to find a good core group of people that you believe in each other, you encourage each other and we would train together. So I would go hustling as they call it with usually a guy just because I mean, you don't want to go with a girl that's your exact same sizes, you know, and I, I would have girls that were my friends and I would give them a job if I couldn't do it or vice versa. But generally speaking, when you go to hustle to meet a coordinator, it's best to go with the opposite sex. So a lot of times I would go with a buddy of mine and we would just go around town. And so the first couple of times I went with somebody, so I didn't say something stupid or do something stupid and you never take the van, <laughs> you know, you never take the van to set. Times have changed actually. Now they don't give out a list at all. So it's essentially just if a friend of yours is working, then hopefully they'll give you the information. So it's not as easy as it used to be. Wow. Um, wow. And there's a lot of closed sets now too. So essentially you do have to just go Oh, and I just walk on set like I'm supposed to be there. And if somebody asks me a question, I'm like, no, it's okay. I'm just going, you know, you almost have to like, just <laughs> make sure you, you don't get in there, man. Get in where don't you fit in. Comfortable. You don't want them going on the walkie, you know, saying, hey, Monty Simmons, the coordinator, like, hey, somebody's here to see you. And he's like, nobody's here to, you know. So you try to just get in and get out and yeah. act as if you're supposed to be there. Fake it till you make it, you there know. You um, but yeah, I did that a lot. And I mean, it took years there was one coordinator actually who he didn't hire me for almost 10 years and his name is Eric Norse. Awesome guy. And I actually, every time I would hustle him, it would be really quick, but I would take notes, talk to him. He was busy, but he said he has a wife and two kids. Here's their names. Yeah. And each time I would take notes. So finally, um, I don't hustle as much anymore because, um, I feel like I put in my time and not, thankfully I have enough connections. But so thankfully about two years ago, I worked for him oh, and he wow. said, Katie, I have, he said, Katie, I have your number in my phone, but you've never worked for me. <laughs> and I didn't even remember that I used to keep this detailed list. Yeah. And then I looked at his uh, contact and I showed him and I said, here's from when I started hustling back, hustling you back in 2006, 2007, 2008. And I, I showed him the list and he was like, I will hire you forever <laughs> now because, because he just was so impressed that like I worked so hard and I didn't give up. That's Took 10 years, but now he respects me. And that's amazing. Um, perseverance, yeah. y'all. Perseverance. Wow. That encourages me. Yep. It gets me excited about, uh, what are we missing, babe? What are we not doing? Perseverance, babe. Perseverance. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> no, it's true. I Absolutely. love it. So you get your first job, and then is that where where the bug bites? Is that where you're like, oh, this is this is where it's at, or or yeah. what, have you already been excited about it beforehand? I think I was already pretty excited. Like, um, I started out acting first, and I did that for two and a half years, and I think I realized after the two years I was okay at it, but it wasn't my natural gifting. Um, and I do just I love the art of acting. I appreciate it but not for me. Like, I think I realized this, this is not my calling. So when I discovered stunts, um, and as I was training, I was just very, you know, I'd, I'd ask people to give me their, like, give me truth. Like, how am I doing? And because I think what I grew up with and because I'd done so many multiple sports, I did pretty well. Like if they did a high fall, I would do it. If nice. they said yeah. throw a punch, I would do. I just kept, and I had to work really hard, and I didn't know anything about martial arts or fights. I mean, so that took years to train and learn that. Horseback riding and stunt driving and stuff like that, I had never done. But as I continued to go on, I would just, you know, um, continue to learn, continue, and it just came naturally. Like the physical side of stunts, using my body and my awareness. and. Um, but I'm sure you were also, not... go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I'm sure you were also um, open to learning new skill sets and not getting stuck in like, or being too prideful to not try or think that you needed to learn something else or get better. Because obviously that expanded your marketability and your ability to be able to get jobs that you wouldn't otherwise be able to do if you were just doing fights or just doing, you know, high falls. But now you can do horseback riding and now you can, you know, do stunt driving. And, you know, that's pretty cool. Absolutely. I think that's one of the things that I love so much about stunts is just when you feel like you're getting really good at something, there's something else that you need to learn. Like yeah. there's, okay, so you get better at fights, but how are your kicks? How's your martial arts? Okay, great. You got that. 
what about this other area of martial arts? What about weapons? How are your weapons? How are your, you know, so it's yeah. like, it's pretty much never ending. And then just when you think you are getting close to knowing everything, you'll be on a set and they ask you to do something like crazy that you've never done before. And then you're like, okay, let's figure it out. Let's make it happen. That's like true improvisation right there. You got to improvise. I would imagine like crazy because it's not like every, and even then I would imagine like you're going to do a stair fall or you're going to do uh, like a fight, but you can't, I mean, maybe fights you can like beat out how they should be exactly for choreography, but I'm sure there are some things that it's like you go for it and you don't know exactly how it's going to be every, every single time. Well, probably same for you. Like with commercials, Naughty, I know that they've, you've had the script and then you get there and then they change it and then they change it again on the spot and it's oh, yeah. multiple yeah. paragraphs and they expect you to just do it. It's the same thing with fights. I was on Dust Till Dawn. Um, this was like two years ago. And he had us, we had three different fights prepared. Actually, no, I think it was four. And then even then, the actors, it wasn't working for them, so they wanted to change. I mean, the whole fight, it just completely changed. And on the spot, I think we actually had to even switch part, like switch roles. So the guy that I was fighting, he ended up doing my part, and then I ended up doing his part. So you need to, you have to know each side, backward, forward, and again. And sometimes they're not given a ton of time, and they're rolling and especially TV. TV is, you got to be quick. That's so, not really. Wow. Yeah. But it's fun. That's part of the fun of it. And, you know, you're dripping sweat and you do take after take and you get the awesome take that they want and it makes it all worth it, you know? So what kind of working out do you need to do to be able to keep <laughs> up with that kind of work, though? <laughs> it can be a lot. It can be a lot. Yeah. Um, when I was in L.A., I kind of got a fight group together, which was super fun. And we would get together three days a week. So we would work on fights anywhere from two to three hours a week, like fight choreo. Um, we'd right. either hit mitts or just straight go straight to the choreo. And then we would switch sides. So same thing. It gets your brain kind of working. I'm sure same for you guys, like with acting, you know, when you memorize a script. But then if they switch it, just being able to jump right into yeah. that. So I was doing that three days a week. And then depending on if I had a certain job coming up, if it was a stunt driving job, I would just, you know, go out and do whatever I needed to do for that. Um, it's kind of always changing. Um, I had a job last year where uh, I worked on the movie called Triple Frontier. Forgot about that one. Um, it's a Netflix movie. It's really good. And the stunts for the actress on that were not strenuous, but it was shot in Bogota, Colombia. Oh, right. And yeah. we are at 10,000 feet elevation and we had to sprint up these hills i mean that were just straight up and down that you have to you have to sprint up them or you can't make them up make it up them and they had a local girl there as well just in case because when i first got out there the first week i could barely walk up the steps because the elevation you have to get used oh, to it. Wow. so um so just a lot of re so prepping for that for example for a month i just was sprinting doing stairs and, and um sprinting and then walking and then sprinting you know so it's just depending on what job you have coming up you're going to prepare you know accordingly it's you've traveled a lot with with the work that you've done like i remember you took me to mexico city with you we got to hang oh, out yeah. there and it was a good time and i got to watch you work what was the, the show was called queen of the south is that right queen queen of the south yeah it was the pilot yeah i did a reverse crash and some other driving that's yeah, awesome that. what would you say the 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 number one thing for aspiring stunt people would be like if I'm sitting at home listening to this, I found this awesome podcast on iTunes. Yeah, someone and I subscribed like and I'm listening Ohio. now and I'm saying, you know what? I want to do this. This sounds really cool, really interesting. I love all that um, changes and stuff. What do you think is like primary? Evaluate yourself and say this is necessary to be a good stunt person. Oh, man. There's a couple things. The first thing I would say is be honest with what's your ability. Um, because it's great if you were like a really great soccer player, you know, because there's some girls who, you know, maybe they're a basketball player, soccer player. Um, but were you OK or were you one of the best? I mean, were you willing to push yourself because stunts? I mean, it can be super strenuous at times. Um, you have to make split second decisions, you know, and it can be someone's li life in your hands. So it's definitely high risk, as you said, but you're constantly problem solving. So I would say two things. What's your ability? And 
as time's going on, people are becoming, even in my career instance, it's becoming more specialized. So especially for men, if you're a martial, martial artist, you better have been winning competitions mm. because there's going to be the next guy that's just going to smoke you. Um, if you're a stunt driver, you had better be a NASCAR. You like some of the guys now are just the drifters. I mean, they are so good. Um, or are you the person more like me where I was a gymnast, but I quit at level nine, which is still good. So I can still tumble, but I wasn't an Olympic gymnast, but I also did soccer, track, volleyball, martial arts. I was, I was able to pick everything up pretty good. So I'm pretty well-rounded. Um, so I would say, be honest with your ability. I've met some people that, you know, they want to do stunts, but then they just physically have you know, maybe they took ballet for three years and I'm like, Ooh, you know, like it's gotta be embedded in your body, like yeah. physicality or you'll get hurt, you know? So it might not even be worth it to you. Kind of like acting for me. I think it wasn't in my blood. I'm a very non-emotional person. So that right there <laughs> probably make, like, I barely cry. I probably cry three, four, five times a year. You're like, you, you want, want me to me experience to, what now? You want me to, <laughs> and in front of people? Hell no. I hide that stuff, which is why I make a good stunt woman. Because <laughs> if the shit hits the fan and it's chaotic, I'm going to handle it. Yeah. Um, so I think it's just ability is the number one thing. And then I would say be honest with yourself with why do you want to do it? And I would say the mm. same thing for anybody that wants to do anything in the film and TV. Why do you want to do it? Because you think it's going to make a lot of money? Don't do it. I mean, you're going to lose, you're going to lose money the first five to 10 years, almost guaranteed. Yeah. Um, I'd say at least the first five years. Um, is it because you want fame? Well, don't do stunts because nobody's going to care, especially on, on your, when you're on set, we've done amazing stunts and they're like, okay, moving on. And I have moments <laughs> of like, did they like it? And it's like, they moved on. So it's good. You know what I mean? And my yeah. friends are happy for me, but nobody cares. Nobody knows that I doubled this girl, that girl. Like they think it's the actress, which is, that means you're doing your job. So as yeah. a good stunt person, it's not about you. You're supposed to make the stunt coordinator look good and the actress look good. And then you've done a, a good job. Which when you think about it, I think the, the times when I've watched any show or movie where you can tell, like it's that obvious, it takes you out. It takes right. you out of the story. Mm, it's just this yeah. weird thing where it's almost like, Ooh, like that was not, you know what I mean? And again, I think if you're looking for it, for sure, you're going to see it more where somebody who's just, you know, enjoying entertainment, enjoying a film, enjoying TV, they're not looking for it. But definitely, I think that there's an aspect to what you're saying. And, and again, I think that would even translate into acting where it's like, if you can see somebody working too hard as an actor... It's like, oh, no, child. <laughs> and I think that that's where, um, you know, I think with the work, I think any work, right? I think there's something beautiful about, like, whether we're watching actors or watching stunt actresses or stunt actors or musicians or dancers, when they are so good at what they're doing, people believe they can do it because it looks so easy. It's like, oh, I can do that. Exactly. Right. You know, like when I auditioned right. for the yeah. liquor girls. I mean, come on. You know what I mean? But it's yeah. like, it's, that's, that's. Oh, it's, or it's like Ninja Warrior. I don't know if you guys have seen Ninja oh, Warrior. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. One of my, one of my awesome girlfriends, Jessie Graff, who anybody that watches Ninja Warrior knows her. She's so amazing and so talented and so strong. Um, but I've had multiple friends who knew me, my cheerleading days and gymnastics days. And they're like, Katie, you should do Ninja Warrior. And I'm like, I do not have strong shoulders. I mean, that is. I'm an, I'm athletic, but I would be off like so quick, I don't, and, and it's, but they make it look easy. So yeah. we think we can do it. Now, if you actually go to a ninja gym, you'll see real quick, you're going to tear your shoulder or you're going to like wipe out the first round. It's so, so it's true. Kind of the same thing. I look at it. I watch it on TV. I'm like, man, just a week or two of training and, uh, you know, just some parkour, just jumping off some boxes. <laughs> No, no, no. I almost broke my neck once trying to do a backflip. I used to, when I was a kid, I would uh, jump up and down on a trampoline. And I actually got pretty good at, like, stunts. But the thing is, is it was all backyard stunts. So I had no form. You Can know? you imagine him, Katie? He is 6'2 on a trampoline trying to do a backflip. 6'2. I would land. That's impressive. I would land uh, backflips where you do it twice. Oh, nice. How crazy is that? Babe, it can't. would look wild and it would be dangerous. <laughs> and I broke my foot once. Uh, but, um, oh I, gosh. I thought to myself, I used to do standing backflips on the trampoline and I was like, you know what? 
I, c- I should try it on the ground. And a little known fact about me is I have zero ups. So like when ups <laughs> in basketball is like, how high can you jump? When I jump, people are like, no, really jump. And I'm like, I am. <laughs> You're like, I, I'm six <laughs> two, fool. I'm trying to jump. Um, so I landed on my neck. So that was. Oh, no. I'm fine, guys. I'm fine. Yeah. Thank God. Right. But that's awesome. So And it's impressive whenever you, you get there and you realize just how far away you are from that. And you're right. like, oh, wow. Like the amount of effort, the amount of training, the amount of physical ability that goes into some of this stuff is is mind blowing. And it always every time I see a movie and I'm blown away by the action scene, it is for me the wonder of movies like that moment where you see almost an impossible feat happen. It's like Mm. that's when I feel the wow moment. And I feel like that's a really Mm. cool thing to be a part of. Yeah, I mean, we just saw Baby Driver like a couple weeks ago. And I mean, I know, yeah, there were just the driving in that. I was like, what? Mm -hmm. Are you kidding me? This is crazy. But it was so good. I didn't think I was going to like it because I had heard that there was like no dialogue, which there was, (laughs) but um, or something like that. But then we watched it and I was like, this was so good. This movie was so good. Um, Do you think um, that... Okay, I know you've heard this before with in regards to acting. A lot of people will say, if you can see yourself doing anything else other than acting, then go do that instead. Do you feel like there's an element of that with stunts? Like, do you feel, or maybe even the, because I'm sure it's changed, right, since you started? Because I know for uh, for me, like, the whole just acting industry, commercially and even theatrically, it's changed so much, even in the last seven, eight, nine years, just with new media and... Um, it's just a lot harder to get an agent manager today. It's a lot harder to get jobs. It's just the whole structure of it is different, right? And I'm sure it might be the same, right. like with your work. Do you think that that mentality of kind of like somebody who's 20 years old saying like, I want to be a, like they really got to be like, at least for like a hot minute, like I can only like gung ho all in. I would say, yeah, I mean, Stunts is different than acting as far as like, I do think, uh, I don't even want to say it's easier to get in because there's so many elements that goes into it, but it's so relational. Whereas acting, I think you have millions and millions and millions of actors where stunts, you have thousands and thousands and thousands, right? Yeah. So there's still a lot, but right. if you have, like, if, if you're talented, if you have a good personality, if you're willing to work hard, if you keep your word, that's a big deal in stunts. Like I've turned down weeks, months of work for like two days of work because this coordinator hired me first. Mm -hmm. I turned down a job that turned into, I would have been doubling the lead for like eight months for three days because that first coordinator called me. So it's very much like an honor system in Mm -hmm. stunts. Um, People definitely... It's, it's a relational industry. Um, so I don't know if I'm answering your question, but I would say stunt isn't, I wouldn't say stunts is as hard as acting to get into, but it depends. Again, you got to have that ability. You got to have the right personality. Um, and it's hard. Like I've had multiple injuries and yeah. God has been so good to me and um, I've come through all of them and I feel great now, but it's, it's been hard. It's hard when you have an injury and then you have to turn down all these jobs and then you're not sure if you're going to be the same. Um, so yeah, I think you definitely want to do, you definitely really have to not really want to do it, have the desire, have the talent, have the drive, have the right personality, be willing and ready for anything. Cause things are changing all the time. I'll get yeah. on set and then they totally change it and you just have to figure it out. Wow. So do you ever does that see answer your question? It does. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. It, it sounds to me, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds to me like you don't want to like keep people from their dream of it, but you want people to go back to the step one, which is the self-realization. What are my skills really? Because it's really important to understand what, where I'm lacking because it is safety. It is something that if you get in over your head, it's not just hey, we can't shoot for today. It's It could potentially injure yourself or someone else or or, or God forbid, worse. And so it, I, it makes sense to me that yeah. it's uh, proceed with, with ultimate self-realization 
almost. Absolutely. Absolutely. You got to be real with yourself. Yeah. And that's hard to yeah. do sometimes, you know? Yeah. And I mean, everybody has to start somewhere. Yeah. But, and always be very honest. I mean, I've heard crazy stories. And again, not to talk about the stunt community is amazing, but the biggest, the biggest thing is honesty. Yeah. Like if a coordinator calls you and you say, for example, I got called for a stunt driving job where they wanted me to do a near miss. So not a crash. A crash actually in my, for me has been easier because you just, you do it. Right. I mean, you have to do the lead up into it. Um, but so when this coordinator called me, I said, Hey, I've done multiple crashes. I've done this type of crash, that type of crash for stunt driving, but I've never done a near miss. Um, it's up to you guys. If you're comfortable with taking the time to do the lead up with me, this and that. So I was very honest. And when I got to set, it was, it was rough. There was a lot of stuff I'd never done. And I think he just saw my reel and was, and he was like, this shit of, is dope. You're hired. Well, yeah, just, <laughs> not that just a lot. I think the, the, the other stunt coordinator that recommended me was like, she's great. She'll show up. She'll do a good job. She'll be fine. And when all was said and done, it went great, but it was some hard stuff that I had never done. So I think he definitely, but they talked me through it and we did it and everything went great. Um, but there's times like that where you're like, holy crap, I did not realize this is what I was getting myself into. So the biggest thing is just to always be honest. And he even said, he's like, you were honest with me. This will, it'll be great, which it was, it was great. Um, so the biggest thing in stunts is to just, cause you've got to learn. And especially with stunt driving stuff, you can yeah. practice as much as and drifting and yeah. you can learn all that stuff, but you're not going to practice a crash. Right. I hope you're not practicing or, a crash or, or a car hit. Like you're not going to, pra- you shouldn't practice a car hit. Maybe like slowly, what is it good? But you're not going to actually do it until the day. Cause that would be insane. So <laughs> the biggest thing is just being honest. And I've, I've probably lost a lot of jobs because for example, one coordinator asked if I was an excellent swimmer and I said, I'm okay. I wasn't on swim team. What do you need me to do? And he told me what he needed me to do. And I said, I think I'll be fine for that. Um, but let me go, he, it was like a drowning sequence. Um, and I had to be in this like Victorian thick dress. So they needed me to be able to be under being yeah. drowned for about 30 seconds. Oh, so I went to friends and I practiced it and I actually was like, whoa, this actually, it's not super easy. Um, and within that time he ended up going with somebody who was an excellent swimmer, which was fine. So for me, I would rather lose the job than to get there and be maxed out and I have nothing left to give and they need more because that's never a good position to be in. And I'm sure it's the same thing with acting. You know, you don't want to get there because maybe you filmed your audition and you got it perfect after the 90th take and then you get there and they give you the new sides and you can't do it. Well, that's the thing. I think that that's, we, we, you know, we kind of briefly talked about it with um, a guest that we had actually her episode aired today that an acting coach had once said, you know, the, I guess what separates the professional actors from the novice is when you're on set, your job as an actor is to be able to do your job um, with repetition under like pressure. Mm-hmm. And you, mm-hmm. and if they are asking you for 50 takes of a breakdown scene, like you need to break down and have a freaking nervous break, whatever <laughs> you need to be able to do that. Like the first time all 50 times. And if yeah. you can't get there, then it's like, that's your job. There Which you is go. why I don't want to be an actress because <laughs> I can't cry normally, much less cry 20 times in a row. Or just anything. It's crazy. I, I just I did a commercial that Dak Shepard directed um, for IBM. And they did what you said. They changed all the di- like oh, actually yeah, changed crazy. like dialogue, added an ex- like extra paragraph. And my right contact had a scratch in it. So I had to take it out. So I couldn't see out of one eye, but they, they had the board up to the side, but they wanted my eye line to be the tip of this guy's nose. So really like the camera was like right in my face. I couldn't just look over cause you can see my eye moving to the board if I needed to. And it was just one of those right. things where it's like, and you it was have a moving shot, right? It was like a lot of pieces were moving. There was a lot of moving shots. Yes, yeah. I was sitting. I had to roll out this to this chair, hit this mark. Like, that's just the job. I mean, you know, there's nothing will take the place. You can sit in your car all day and, like, repeat lines to yourself. But when you're actually sitting, moving, hitting your mark, see, you know, you got to, this is your eye line. You can't look anywhere else. And it's like, you're supposed to react to the tip of somebody's nose. It's just, that's the job. So, yeah, totally. 
And I, I a, yeah. a good exercise for you at home listening, if you're if you're like, you know what, maybe I can do this. Maybe may, maybe I'm uh, right for stunt acting. I think if you go, if you're walking and you're listening to us and you see a flight of stairs, I want you to look at that flight of stairs. I want you to take a second, slow your breathing, and then I want you to throw yourself down it. <laughs> I want no. you. I want no. you. I want you to not hurt yourself, <laughs> and then I want you to walk back up those stairs, <clears throat> dust yourself off, and try again. Just blow kidding. Blow your breath, and then throw yourself down. And if you can do that three or four times without getting hurt, then I think you might have uh, something there. I think you got the the gumption. But until you're, you might be crazy, there, and you're the one that's gonna kill yourself. Hey, no. that's the truth. <laughs> yeah, that that person calls. They're like, "Can you throw yourself down the stairs?" Yes, I used to do it all the time by myself. No, then there's something wrong with you. I don't think we want you for this job. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think there's just something to be in there, and and the pressure be in there. I I think that's hard to kind of wrap your mind. Even whenever you were talking about like going to a certain place emotionally, it's like if you're listening to this and you've never experienced being there, it's difficult to put yourself in the position of that being or sounding difficult. But it, going back to, you know, you practicing in the, in the um, swimming pool with that dress, it's so heavy and you're so exhausted mm. from swimming and you, you would have to do that multiple times. It's like there's not really a way to prepare no. except to prepare for everything, right? Mm -hmm. Well, and essentially what happens, and I knew this, which is why I was okay with not getting that job, was... I was comfortable to 30 seconds, like he said, but you should be be, pre be prepared for a minute to minute and a half because they're going to stretch it because the yeah. longer the shot, the longer that they could get the shot, the better for them. So you just always have to be prepared. I've had jobs where they're like, hey, it's going to be easy. You do gymnastics, right? But I don't think you need that. Um, it's just going to be a quick fight. I show up and they're like, okay, you're going to do an arm bar takedown here, run, jump. You can do some parkour, right? Which I don't really, but I can kind of do some because I'm a gymnast and you just... Like if you can't do what they need you to do, you better have something in your wheelhouse to look just as good, if not better, to show them, let's do this instead. You don't tell them you can't do the other thing. You just show them, yes, we'll make it work, right? Like this yes, looks cool, we'll right? This looks better than what you, right? Yeah. You give them all the different options and then know on the day after you shot the previs 500 times and after everything's perfect, they're going to change it anyways so just be ready for it and okay with it and it's not about you and it's that, about giving them what they want and making a good shot making the actress look good and that that word you use previs would you mind breaking that down for um someone who might not have heard that before oh yeah sure so a previs um that we do for stunts it's short for pre-visualization and so we will film um what we call previs of what the action is and a lot of times i mean it's helpful to have as much even acting in there as possible so obviously when you're performing as a stunt person it's helpful to sometimes we'll, if it's not a lot of lines we'll say it as well um and we'll perform let's say like the fight scene like this guy's attacking the girl and we'll shoot our take on it and then we'll send it to the director and then the director producers will go hey we like that but not this or this is too long or that's mm. too short can you do this and that? So then we'll go back to the drawing board and this could be an eight hour day. This could be, if it's a TV show, usually it's a day to two to three. If it's a film, I mean, it could be months of previs wow. where you're essentially just shooting it, sending it, they send it back, shoot it, send it back. And it's a back and forth. Wow. And then eventually you get exactly what you want. And still, when you get on set, <laughs> be prepared that it's all going to change anyways, <laughs> but at least you're prepared for what they want. You've given them everything that you've got. I think wow. one of the cool things about your job, too, which is, I guess, a perk, is you've been able to travel a lot, which is awesome. Where, where do you think is the, what's your most favorite place that you've gotten to go for work? Manila, Philippines was super fun. That was Born Legacy. Um, my husband and I, Corey, and I got involved with an orphanage out there, which was just really cool and get to know the locals. It was a really awesome experience. Um, Czech Republic. I don't know if anybody's ever been there, but it is beautiful. So amazing. I shot um, Underworld 5 there. Uh, wow, let's that's see awesome. where else. Yeah, I've been to Hawaii. Oh, Cuba. We got to go to Cuba on Fast 8 before they opened it up to the United States. So it was like when... Oh, wow. 
it was going to be opened up, but it hadn't yet. So we got to see it before there's a McDonald's there, which there might already be a McDonald's there now. Why? Um, Just kidding. Yeah, I know. Crazy, right? Um, Puerto Rico, I've worked a couple times. And I feel like I might be forgetting. I mean, all throughout the United States. For sure. Um, trying to remember where else. There you might be a couple of I'm sorry. I can't remember. Oh, Colombia. Yeah, thank you. And Mexico Bogota, City. Columbia, you were there for a while. Mexico too. City. Yep. Which was amazing. Um, and it's been awesome just to see different cultures, different people. And then when you're shooting a lot of times, you know, like I said, for Fast 8 in Cuba, we never would have. Some of those locations you can't even get into. Oh, wow. But because you're, they're sh- you're shooting and you're representing their country, they love yeah. that you're there. So that was an amazing experience. And yes, Nadia, you came the Mexico City and you were my interpreter because they said, they told me not to go out since I didn't speak Spanish. They're like, so, no, you stay and, in and your hotel. And because you're my best friend, I wanted you to come with me. I want to bring my, my Nicaraguan friend. She can help me out. <laughs> exactly. I That's amazing. That. Now, we do this thing with all of our guests and we're going to do it with you. Uh, okay. It's, it's a couple of questions and the, the, the questions You're saying it very mischievously. I am because there's a there is a, a piece to it that we a caveat that we ask for. You gotta answer top of your mind. So it doesn't have to be the best okay. answer. It doesn't have to be uh, even a formed thought, but uh, we're gonna ask you a couple of questions and then just give us your top answer, what was on the top of your mind. First thing that comes to mind. First thing that comes to mind. No, no. Take it okay. away. I'll take it away. Um, if you could be any animal, which animal would you be and why? Cougar. Why? Ooh. Um, probably cause my husband, Corey said that's what he thinks that I am because I'm fast when I need to be, but I don't need to be seen, but I'm also very lazy. <laughs> <laughs> you just so, want to hang out. I, just think, I don't know. They're, they're kind of the most awesome, aggressive, but super intelligent cat, right? Yeah. They yeah. rule the jungle. Yeah, they do. Okay. If you can only eat one food for the rest of your life, what would it be? Mm. Oh, my gosh. The first thing that came to my mind was brownie. I am such a fat girl. <laughs> oh, man. That's amazing. Brown- if I, I would say brownie, bread. I really do love bread and a steak, but we'll stick with brownie. Okay. You're, well, it's still kind of in the chocolate family. So yeah. far, three out of three has been chocolate, even though that's not chocolate, but it's like a bread chocolate. So um, okay. that's amazing. There's okay. a theme here. Right. Was that my second question? That, no. was, your, that was your third. Third. Okay. Um, if you could be any superhero, which superhero would you be? And why? And why? <sighs> well, Batman came to my mind, but I don't know why. Um, <laughs> yes. What superhero would I be? I'd, I'd probably say, sorry, I don't really want to be Batman. And that's just what came to like, no, my, no, Batman. yeah, it just came fine. to my mind. Um, I would say, is it the invisible man? I sure. So. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds is like that. One. Okay. I would say just because I don't know. I like to come and go as I please and nobody see me or be bothered does this you, that, you don't want nobody out in your that's business the, that's, that's the cougar side of me like, I, I think say that, cool to, that sounds so creepy but just to like <laughs> you could jump into people's oh yeah that does sound creepy Maybe that's a bad a <laughs> okay how about fly i would fly that would be my awesome superpower awesome and then your last question is if you weren't doing stunts yes what would be another career that you would love to do hmm I would say I would love to interview. Logic's aside. What's that? Logic is aside. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, totally, totally. Before I got into stunts, I actually auditioned to be a traveling host for extreme sports. Um, I didn't get it. I had no experience in any hosting. Um, so not necessarily a host, but more, I would just love to travel the world and meet the top athletes and just follow them around for a week. Do what they do. Like, what do they do every morning? What do they do middle day at night? Interview them and just get to be a part of experiencing what they do in their day in and day out. That's awesome. I, I love I love traveling. I love all kinds of sports, and I have such an appreciation for athletes and what it takes, you know, to to be this amazing athlete. So 
Yeah. Wow. So if that's that a job, awesome. I would like that. Yeah, girl, that could be a job. You know, that sounds like a blog, and that would be followable for sure. I'd follow that blog. Yeah, man. Get you on do it. You should do it. We'd, in have to, we'd have to have my husband write it because I'm not a writer. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's a perfect team. Uh, that's what we're shooting for. The there we go. Team. Yeah. yeah, right. <laughs> that's awesome. Have you heard of the, the guy David Goggins? I haven't. So a little bit of what you're saying kind of resonated with it. He's a ex uh, military dude. He was a Navy first dude to do a Navy seal army ranger and the other, um, like elite, um, uh, I guess, what would you call it? Warrior school. And this <laughs> oh. dude is crazy, but he doesn't do what you're talking about, but his life is insane. He wakes up every morning at four 30 he goes on runs that are like 10 plus miles, no matter where he's at. I'm tired already. Like I just follow his Instagram and I get tired and it's really impressive. And I always thought to myself, it'd be cool to have someone do that. What you're talking about where they just like, what is his life? Like what, like what does yeah. it actually take to live that extreme? I think that'd be really interesting. That's awesome. Um, I feel like I have two things that I like want to quickly ask, which is one of them is, um, if you could, if somebody listening, if somebody was listening and you can give them like a bit of advice or just like one tidbit of like a little nugget, a little nugget, a little chicken nugget to chew on um, in regards to stunts, like what would it be? Hmm. I would say once you know you want to do it and you have the ability and you kind of assess yourself like we talked about before to never give up because I think just like any career but especially in the entertainment industry you're going to have good years you're going to have bad years you're going to have preach you know, <laughs> yeah so I, I think I would say never give up and be loyal like be loyal to the people that you trust that you want to work be loyal to everybody but um yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think you're going to look back on your career. I know I won't look back and be like, man, I can't believe I gave away that seven-month job for two days of work. Because one of those, that couple that I did a 125-foot high fall decelerator, and they handpicked me. I got to be in a wedding dress. Um, TV show, so not as big as the movie Jack Reacher, which I turned down. That was actually three weeks, but it usually turns into more or could have. Yeah. And that coordinator, I could tell, was so shocked when I turned it down because it was for Danny and Lisa was Ellis and Danny actually passed a couple years after that. Mm. So I guess all I'm saying is in the grand scheme of things, never give up and stay loyal um, to your word. I think that just goes such a, such a far way. And I've always kind of stood strong to, there's a scripture in the Bible that says what profits a man to gain the whole world yet lose his soul. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I've seen a lot of people, in the industry, not just stunts, but who maybe have given up part of themselves to get where they're at. Mm -hmm. And you can see it in their eyes. They're not happy and they're not, for, they're not fulfilled. And there's been other people too, who they've stayed true to themselves and they've killed it in this industry and good for them. And they're continuing onward and upward, but you guys probably have had the same, um, for sure. where you talk to some people where they've made it quote unquote. Right. Oh, but it's never enough just because that's the human condition. condition and desire to always want more, which is good. But I just think stay true to yourself and what you believe without a shadow doubt is the right decision, what you're supposed to do day in and day out. And last question. And, and be fa faithful to your word. Go ahead. You got one, babe? Yeah. One of my questions is, is there any stunts out there that you still look at in amazement and go, Wow. I, I don't even know how they pulled that off. Oh, yeah. I just went to uh, the Stunt Taurus Awards. That was yeah. on May 11th. And I don't even know how to explain what they did, but it was an amazing high fall, but they also had to use rigging. And I can't even explain what happened because it was just crazy how they did it. They, they're pushing boundaries more and more, and it's so impressive what they're learning how, learning how to do. I mean, it's the stunt community is pretty amazing um for example i don't know if you saw the movie mad max the new one that they did and mm -mm. i haven't yet but i want to 
Oh, okay. So yeah. good. And unfortunately, they don't have an Oscar for Sense right now, which we're trying to change that. But the director even mentioned Guy Norris, who I worked with him. He was the second unit director on Triple Frontier, but he was also the second unit director on um, uh, Mad Max. And what they did was just, you have to watch the movie. I don't want to give anything away. Um, so creative, so dangerous. I heard some of the stuff that happened because not everything goes perfectly. Yeah. Um, thankfully, everybody ended up being okay, but some injuries and um, a lot of these guys were in the circus and they had to jump from car to car, but on these, you'll just have to watch the movie. There's essentially like these guys from Cirque du Soleil that had to clip themselves in as the cars are speeding 50 miles an hour. Wow. And there's like dust everywhere. And that's not easy, easy stuff. So I, I getting to work with that's an Australian team, Guy Norris and uh, Tim Wong. Um, getting to work with them on Triple Frontier and just hearing their stories, it's so impressive. I've been so blessed to work with such talented people, and I consider myself the rudiest stunts <laughs> for sure. Um, I got the heart for it, and I will do my best and always learn. But some people are definitely. Let's put this, it'd be like if I'm in college sports and some of these guys I work with, I mean, they're in the Olympics and I just like, you know, <laughs> you just do the best you can do, yeah. have a good attitude and just say, you're amazing, you know? Hey, well, you let me, you, let me learn from you. It took, it's gotten you far, you man, you, you've had a pretty impressive career. So that's, that's pretty amazing. That's so right. And thank you again for hopping on our show. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to check out the Rudy of sports, <laughs> not sports, Katie. of uh, stunts, <laughs> stunts. Uh, hop online, check her out. Katie Eichen, you are awesome. And everything that you've done uh, is is so cool to see and be a part of. Is there thank anything that us. we should be looking out for or where can yeah. people find you? Uh, I'd say Instagram, but I don't really do it. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> no biggie, no biggie. Yeah, follow her on Instagram. Maybe that'll give her a little. Beep beep. I just finished working on Zombieland too, but awesome. I don't look like myself. So, but hey, but when it's gonna be a good one. So watch that. So go out and check it out, y'all. Look out for Zombieland too. Love you, girl. Thanks for thanks for doing this you for too. us. Have a good one. Thanks for having me, ladies and gentlemen. Another one in the can. I cannot believe it. It's going too good. Yeah, man.